Okay, welcome. Welcome, everybody. Today is December 24th, 2020. This is Christmas Eve. So um, a special welcome to all of you who are joining me live. And also for those of you who, you who are listening to this afterwards. The topic for this evening is co-creating with the universe. And you are listening to a new human experience podcast. <laughs> So this is um, the, the last of the podcast for the year 2020. And oh, what a year we have had. It's, it is anything but normal. Like no, no matter what has happened or not happened in your life, I just um, want to actually remind you because the, uh, the topic tonight is co-creating in the universe that whatever happened or failed to happen in in, uh, in 2020, that you have actually contributed to this creation. We all have. I'm not trying to place blame or trying to, um, that kind, nothing like that at, at all. Yes, I know that, you know, um, some of you may be horrified and say, well, who in their right mind would want to create a year like 2020? Because it's, it's really been, um, let's say, unusual. Let's, let's put it that way, unusual. And um, yeah, and I totally understand why any of you would, be, would feel horrified that you or anyone else would have created this kind of a year and this, this um, well, whatever it is that we're having and kind of sort of almost worldwide lockdown that we are experiencing in, in this year of 2020. And I totally understand that consciously, none of us, no one would, um, we want to create something like that that however we did, we did co-created this. We co-created this um, on a soul level and also at an unconscious level as well, that we agreed to step into this collective timeline. And yes, it was quite the creation and it is an absolutely perfect creation as well. The idea that that um, there is this threat to our lives or our way of life out there and we have to protect ourselves from this this threat it's not a new it's not something new at all we we have kind of been playing around with it with this idea that there is a threat there is fear everywhere we have actually fought uh, two not just one, but two world wars and countless other wars um, to support this idea that there is a threat that we have to actually all take up arms to go and fight an enemy somewhere else. And, um, and there's been so many things lately. There is September 11th that happened and, and then we sent armies made up of our loved ones to chase down weapons of mass destruction that, you know, actually is non-existent. We've done all that. And, and so at a human level, what is the next level that we can turn up that fear? And of course, virus. We've been, this idea of a virus have been floating around for, for quite a number of years already. Um, like, because viruses, if you look at it, is really um, the perfect, the perfect enemy. Because unlike the Germans or the Russians or any other bad guys that we can see and vilify and go fight and send arms and, and soldiers over there, um, how are we going to fight a virus? A virus is, uh, we can't see it. It's a perfect weapon of control, of mass destruction. It's perfect. You can't see it. You can't shout it at it. You can't close your door and hide from it, none of that. It is pure, 
pure genius to have something that we can't even see to to turn up this this um, dial of fear. There is danger and death and literally anywhere and wherever and you there's no way to hide from it. So a virus is really the perfect scenario to perpetuate this perfect hoax, let's say. I'm not saying that there's no virus. I'm saying that there is definitely a virus. And there had been many, many other viruses. There had been AIDS, Ebola, H1N1, SARS. Uh, there's, there's so many and, and they have been happening for a long time now. Do you remember what happened to them? Exactly, they are still around. AIDS is still around, Ebola is still around. All those other ones still around. When the human collective decide to play with a scenario, be it a world war, um, a terrorist attack, or a deadly virus. However, even though the human collective decided to plug that in, it is, however, still up to each and every one of us to co-create with that scenario to um, whether how much we want to experience it, how do we want to experience it, that is really still up to us. We have complete control over that. It is, so you can think of anything that the, 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 uh, the collective um, pluck in as it's like this new video game that comes out that's called um, extreme version, extreme edition, let's say, you know, this big C extreme version and this new game promised nail biting, sitting on the edge of your seat experience, which is really makes it a great game for you to play with. You can actually play with that. Everywhere you turn, you can see people playing it. They stayed home, they skipped work, they tuned in uh, to the television and, and the social media and they find out what happened every morning. They, they look at the, 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 the case counts or even the death counts. So while, while we're sleeping, all of this is still going on. You can play it at that level or you can, if you choose to, just skip it. But what do I mean by skip it? So this collective game that's being pushed, this extreme edition um, gameplay being pushed on the TV, social media, government decreeing a lockdown, blah, 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 all of those is all just um, how we can make it so real. We can make it so real, but I just want to let you know, in case you don't know already or don't realize already, is that TV, social media, even government, your neighbors, all of them are all part of the game. And you can simply skip it, decide that you're gonna skip it by being conscious that this is a game. And the aim of this game, I mean, yeah, I am, I'm really talking big now, this is a game. The aim of this game is to distract and entertain you with fear. I just want to pause to, to allow you to take it all in. I just want you to know that we all love fear. Have you, haven't you ever um, loved the experience of a good horror movie? And actually, it does not have to be a horror movie. It could be an action movie. It could be any kind of a movie. But um, if you look at all the movies, all the, 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 the video games and all that, it's all based on adversity in one form or another. And I want to let you know that adversity is our entertainment. It truly is is our entertainment. There has never been any popular book or movie 
or theater play or game for that matter, or, or even relationship that has no adversity in the storyline. Because if there's no adversity, if everything is ah oh, simply easy, everything is according to what you wish, what you wish is going to just pop in and it's like all done, no adversity, nothing at all. It's simply not entertaining. And that is what the, the third dimension paradigm is about. It's about playing in adversity. It's about playing this black and white, this good and evil, this duality game. And that is the third dimension paradigm, or you can call that the 3D game. And we have all co-created and played in that paradigm. And so this, this last episode on co-creation and also last episode of this podcast for the year 2020 is I just want to let you know that you, I'm, I'm not saying that this, there's anything wrong with 3D. I just want you to know that it's been really fun and entertaining playing in this 3D game, this 3D paradigm. And if you all look in at your own life, you have created adversities for yourself. And even though you may feel um, frustrated, you may feel exasperated, but I just want you to know that you at a human level on some level, you actually enjoyed that as well, because we love a good adversity. We do. It is really what um, the 3D paradigm is about. And there's nothing wrong with it. Drama is, is what 3D is about and nothing wrong with that. Nothing absolutely at all. That is a perfect creation. You're playing that game. But that's not the only game. And that what is being offered, what is being offered the whole of 2020 is actually to show you how extreme you can play this game. And if you don't believe me, I just want to let you know that, you know, 2020, everything, this extreme addition is not going away. You can play this till, I don't know, 30, 30 <laughs> to play this kind of 3D paradigm. It's all up to you. It's up to you. You have a choice. And the next, and your choice is you can stay in 3D or you can go to 5D, the 5D paradigm. But just to let you know that 5D is also a game, different kind of game, but it's also a game. And um, the 5D paradigm is to know that this is a game. That's kind of the, the first, the first thing you need to realize is when you're in 3D, you don't know that this is a game. You're completely immersed. You may have glimpses that there is something beyond glimpses. You may have moments of clarity and you know on some level, there's more than this, there's more but you don't actually get to um, completely remember that this is a game. That's, how, well, that's what the 3D paradigm is about, is that you don't know that this is a game. You think it's real because you actually touch it. You actually smell it. You actually um, had your heart broken. You actually had your hand taken. Actually, your hand being blown off like all these, or you may have a um, car accident and you are a paraplegic. It's real, it's very real. And you don't remember that it's a game. That's what the 3D paradigm is. 
but once you know, once you remember that it's a game and you start to remember and remind yourself moment to moment that I'm in the game, this is a game, then you start to get out of 3D because you can't play the same game anymore when you know that it's the game. And that's really is your foot into 5D paradigm. 5D paradigm, the beginning is that you remember there's more. You're connected to the expanded version of you. And you know that this is a game. Even 5D is a game. Even 12D, the 12th dimension, it's also a game. Very different kind of game, but it's a game. So fifth dimension paradigm. The first rule is you have to remember that it's a game, that life on Mother Earth is a game, and that your life and experience here is your creation. Meaning that whatever you have experienced in your life, it could be um, your marriage from hell, your creation, it's a game. You created that for yourself. Your mother from hell or your father from hell, or, or any other family members that's put you through hell or done you wrong in any other way, they are still your creation. And that the boss, you know, the, the terrible boss or the, the terrible government, also your creation. Everything that is wrong or everything that is right in your life is your creation. So that's why. 2020 is a perfect creation. We have collectively co-created a, how shall I say, a bifurcation point, a choice point. So it's a point for us to choose. Do we want to keep playing in the 3D game or do we want to step up to play in the 5D game? It's up to you. It's, there's no right, there is no wrong you are the one that has to choose it. And if you choose to go into 5D, to step up to play in 5D, then the first thing is, you know, remember it's a game and also take responsibility for all of your creations. And um, so, so that is really how you start to get yourself out of 3D. So let's see what rule number one in 5D is it's a game and you are the creator of the game. You may not be consciously creating everything yet since we are, and, and especially when we are still just starting to step up to the fifth dimension game, um, a lot of the times we, it's, um, it's not so easy to get that we have, we've created all this. But if you want to step up the, to the 5D, the fifth dimension game, then the, the first step in the journey is to remember you created this. You are in charge of your hologram, meaning that um, we, how we all create our reality, we, we took on the, um, well, <laughs> we took on the indoctrination. We took on all of these things that says that we are a victim. Um, we are not good enough. We don't deserve um, love. We don't deserve good things. Um, we are just one person, we are weak, we are women, we are weak, we are men, we are weak. We need to earn love, we have to be um, validated by other people. We can't just, you know, love ourselves and, and be confident. We have to have a validation from someone else in order to, to feel confident. And we created this ego that is always trying to protect us. So all of these, all of these are indoctrination. So all of these are part of the, the, the 3D mindset. So when you step into 5D, um, remember that this is a game 
and you created this hologram and you're responsible for it. And the first thing you need to do is let go of all the, the um, indoctrination, all the mindsets that you have adopted when you were, when you have been living in and playing with 3D for such a long time, then there's a lot of cleaning up that you need to do. And that's why the, all of these, the next couple of years, if you decide to um, really step up to play in 5D, it's clean up, clean up and clean up. But still know that, remember that, keep reminding yourself when something is happening in your life that you don't prefer, that it's your creation. The reason I picked the, um, the graphics for this episode is, is actually the, the message that I want to convey is that the collective is, um, is still trying to convince us to come play in the 3D, come let's, let's get, create more dr drama, more trauma. And it's the, it's the wasteland. But when you step into really take charge and really be responsible for your own creation, for your own hologram, for creating your own reality, you have to really be very um, mindful that you need to see what it is that you want to see. Have the reality that you want to live in that you want to experience in your mind so strongly that you can actually whatever, no matter what you see in front of you, you know that that's, a, that's the illusion. You can see um, things burning up. You may be able to see, I don't know what it is that the, uh, the collective has, has lined up next year not, not exactly, not all the details, maybe a little bit of here and there. However, no matter what you see in front of you, it's simply the results of past creations. It's simply the results of 3D mentality. You have been living or we have all been living in third dimension and playing in that for such a long time that we have adopted a lot of mindsets that is, um, that is still trying to create a reality for us that when we go into the fifth dimension, when we start to tick over and be 100% of our own creation, that all those things we have to simply let go of, not to resist them, not to judge them, not to, not to, um, not to think of them as being bad, just to know that, oh, that's what you're seeing if you don't prefer it. That's just a result of a past creation. And if you don't like what you see, in your reality, then, then stop, stop yourself, really stop yourself and let go of the, the mindsets that have you reacting. It's not about reacting, stop reacting. It's to, because when you're reacting, you're always reacting from the past. You are always reacting from, um, some experience in the past, but be in this moment and really say, oh, okay, this, this is what's showing up and remind yourself this is, this is a game and this is a hologram that you have created. That's why you're experiencing it. And you start to ask yourself, what can I do in this moment right here, right now? What is the one thing I can do, I can feel, or I can say or I can act that is going to shift me out of this reality, 
that is the the question you need to ask yourself. So when you're reacting, you're reacting from I'm a victim, I'm not good enough, that's why this is happening, I don't deserve this, blah, blah, blah. No, don't react. Act. Act from consciousness. Act from this moment. Because when you're in this moment, you remember that you are creating this hologram. This is your creation. And because it's my creation, so I cannot um, resist it. I cannot, I cannot say that it's bad. All I can do is stop feeding this creation, stop feeding my reaction, and really step back and say, and really get to the, the source. Why am I creating this? What is the the thought process that went into creating this and be very um, and really take responsibility. Take 100% responsibility for cleaning up your own mindset. If the situation you're seeing have you feel like you're a victim, then clear the victim mentality. If this makes you sad, clear the mentality that this is a sad thing, that whatever it is, your sadness is um, calling up, is letting you know that, oh, this is a sad thing, then, then let go of that, clean it up. And um, we, and really, um, stop creating, stop this creation. Because when you stop and know what it is that has, that has been feeding this creation, then you can actually take an action to stop feeding this creation and you would be able to actually start to connect back to the vision of what it is that you actually want to see what it is that you actually want to experience. It's like putting on this, this sunglasses that can only see the vision that you want to project. No matter what it is that you may be experiencing and, and feeling right now outside of you, you don't fight it. You simply clean it up clean up your mindset that's created the situation for yourself if you don't like this creation. And then go back to project the vision that you actually want to create and experience. And from there, from there, ask what is one action? What is something that I can do in this moment? that is going to take me one step closer to being able to experience what it is that I prefer to experience. So that really is, um, that really is tying up everything that I've been talking all month long. I've talked about how to create, I've talked about how to discreate. And now, we've come to this, which is um, how to co-create with the universe. The universe is always eager to co-create with us. The whole human collective, very responsible, very responsive, I should say, very responsive to what it is that you want to co-create. And whatever it is that you see is, and what it is that you feel, is really your, your cue, your cue, your, um, how should I put it? It's really letting you know what it is that went in to um, creating this reality that you are that you're experiencing right now. If you like it, 
not an issue. You just keep doing what you're doing. If you don't like it, then clean up and start seeing, visualizing, feeling as though you are already experiencing what you prefer to experience. You smell it. You can smell yourself feeling that, being that, experiencing that. You can taste it. You can hear it. All of that. And you take action from that. From when you're in that state of already in that creation. Even though you can't see it right now, you may not be able to feel it right now, but you act as though you can see it. You act as though you can feel it. So that really is all that I want to talk about this evening is that you all now have, <laughs> you all now have all the tools of creating. You now have all the tools of this creating and you now know that um, all you have to do is keep reminding yourself this is a game. This is a hologram and you are the one that's creating it and really live that reality. And when the, the old, um, old thinking of you're a victim, you don't deserve this, all those, your, your internal dialogue is telling you all this, not because it is true, but because you have been um, living that reality for such a long time. So now you need to, if you choose to, if you choose to step into fifth dimension is start now. From now on, when something turn up that you don't prefer to experience, take full responsibility for it. Know that this is your creation, whatever it is you're experiencing is your creation. So discreate it. You know how to discreate it now. So discreate it and then create what it is that you prefer and live that a hundred percent and know that because you're new at this, this 5D game. So it may at first take you a little bit longer to do that. But know, really know that and don't give up because your, your ego um, is, is very good at trying to convince you to go back to playing in 3D because 5D is so hard. You have to do so many processing. Uh, why don't you just let someone else save you? Let someone else create for you. Um, you can, that's your choice. But know that you also have the ability to create for yourself whatever it is that you want to experience, anything. The sky is the limit. And this is what fifth dimension is about, is to be conscious when you're in this game, in this simulation. Consciously create. And also um, know that it's not about creating what you want because you want to create from the ego. No, it's, it's not about creating from the ego. It's about creating as a part of the society and knowing that you are all part of one. And that is also a part of the fifth dimension game, the 5D game. For now though, because we are just starting on this 5D journey, is to really know and notice that it is a game and to experiment with playing this game full out 
and taking responsibility for yourself and creating practice, practice, practice. And I actually want to um, you know, do a give a few example of people that have been actually starting to play in the fifth dimension. For example, I remember um, Joe Dispenza, Dr. Joe Dispenza has shared how he, even though he was um, the doctor, he, he had a bad car accident and the diagnosis that the doctor gave him was not good and that he will not be able to walk again. I think he will not be able to function like he could before the, the accident, but he didn't, he didn't like that diagnosis and he didn't believe in it. And because he has that idea that he can create for himself. So he actually took the time to sit with his body and tell his body how he actually wanted the body to work. And he communicated with his body, let his body know, this is how I want my, my vertebra to be one above the other and all working in, together. And he was able to, to really take over and be conscious of what he is creating, his health, being able to walk again and being able to function again. He did not let his body take over um, to what is normal at the time, which is when someone had this kind of um, accident, they, they are more likely to not be able to ever walk properly again. He, he didn't let his body to take the, the normal or default position. He took over. He's, he told his body, this is what I want you to do. And he consciously created that reality for himself. It took him a while to do that. And this is what we each and every one have to do now is to take the time to be conscious of what it is that we want to experience, what it is that we want to see and feel in our life and not take what it is that we can have, but really consciously live a hundred percent, know that this is my creation. This is my hologram. This is my reality. I can tell my reality. This is what I want. And I don't take no for an answer. And I do it over and over again. I discreate all the previous creations that does not align with the new reality that I want to experience. And I do that. And so you have to clean out all of the, the um, indoctrination that we have gone through to play the 3D game in order to really get into playing the 5D game. So there is that process of letting go of 3D my mindset and mentality and own that. This is my hologram. This is my reality. I'm going to create it one moment at a time. And whatever it is that I see out there that does not match with what I want, discreate it. Discreate it until you see the reality you want, until you get there. And don't take no for an answer. And that's, and the more you do this, the more you let go of the 3D mentality of playing the victim of playing small, the more you can let go of all of that, the easier it gets. So this is what co-creating with the universe is about, is um, we have to unlearn some previous mindsets and take charge of our own creation and step up to being and really knowing that you are the creator of all of your experiences.
anything good, bad, and anywhere in between. It's all you. I'm not saying to reject them. I'm just saying take responsibility. And that is, um, yeah, that's it. That's all I want to share.